I'll be honest with you, among 2022's major releases, I was more optimistic that Starfield would be among the games that would actually launch in its 2022 release window, or more specifically, the release date that Bethesda put out there, 11-11-2022, but it would seem as though that wasn't meant to be. And I was optimistic because this game's been in development for a while now. Here's a January 2022 article from New Salad NME, whose headline reads, Bethesda Starfield has been in development for at least six years already. Bethesda space-based RPG could date as far back as 2013. And this is based off of the fact that the trademark Starfield was filed back in 2013. So we certainly know by then, at the very least, Bethesda had begun pre-production on the game and they knew the title of the game and conceptualization for the game at the very least started. Now obviously if you do the math, 2013 is actually almost a decade ago. What do they mean by at least six years already? Well, turns out that there's a Bethesda artist going by the name Lucas Hardy who revealed that they had been working on Starfield since 2016 and that they designed the spacesuit constellation logo and worked on our customizable face system. This is something that Lucas posted on their personal website. So in 2013, almost a decade ago, the trademark Starfield had been filed. So very early pre-production had started is what I'm assuming. And then by 2016, it seemed as though they were at a point where they were starting to design some of the core elements of the game. There were even rumors back in 2017 that during that year's Bethesda press conference, Bethesda was meant to reveal Starfield for the first time, and then that that was cut last minute, and that explains why there was literally a field of stars as a core thematic element of the background visual. I don't know for sure if those rumors were true or not. I just remember such rumors flaring up at the time. But then during the following year's E3 press conference back in June 10th, 2018, Starfield was finally officially announced alongside Elder Scrolls 6, which that game's obviously ways away. And so it started to feel like Starfield was going to be in our hands sooner rather than later. But obviously we have fast forwarded now Four years, almost four years since the reveal of that teaser trailer. Now, we did get an official release date back in June 13th, 2021. On that day, Bethesda announced via this blog post that Starfield arrives exclusively on Xbox Series X, S, and PC on 11-11-2022. And again, given how long the game had been in development and given, you know, that clever release date of 11-11 that they use for Skyrim, I figured, okay, Bethesda's pretty confident that this game will ship by then. But just yesterday, on May 12, 2022, Bethesda dropped this bombshell that announced that both Redfall and Starfield would be delayed to the first half of next year. So here's the full statement for those who are curious. It reads, We have made the decision to delay the launches of Redfall and Starfield to the first half of 2023. The teams at Arcane Austin, Redfall, and Bethesda Game Studio Starfield have incredible ambitions for their games, and we want to ensure that you receive the best, most polished versions of them. We want to thank everyone for their excitement for Redfall and Starfield. That energy is a huge part of what inspires us all every day and drives our excitement for what we are creating. We can't wait to share our first deep dive into the gameplay for both Redfall and Starfield soon. Thank you for your support. So at the very least, we are going to see gameplay soon, and hopefully it's a pretty extensive deep dive. Exactly when, you may ask? Well, Xbox did announce an Xbox and Bethesda game showcase for June 12th, 2022. It's their summer press conference, and there is absolutely no doubt that that's when they'll reveal gameplay for both Redfall and Starfield, and it's certainly going to be a pretty highly anticipated press conference given how long people have been clamoring to finally see something concrete about Starfield, and it'll be interesting to see whether the game ultimately impresses. In the meantime, though, Bethesda Game Studios also put out a tweet that reads, We cannot wait for you to play Starfield, but we need some more time. We're so thankful for all the support and encouragement and are excited to show you the game soon. Now, with this delay, obviously, some people will be disappointed. Others might even be frustrated. But I'm very much in the camp that if a game has to be delayed for it to be in the best, most polished state at launch, then I'm in full support of that. And that is especially so after the launch of Cyberpunk 2077, a game that clearly needed at least a year more 
in the oven. And speaking of Cyberpunk, turns out that developers within Bethesda were actually worried about that 11-11-22 release date. This is what Jason Schreier, who is an industry insider and has been known to have reliable insider sources, tweeted about this delay last spring before E3. I spoke to some folks on Starfield who were extremely worried about committing to an 11-11-2022 date based on the progress they'd made so far. Next, Cyberpunk was the term floated. Good on Bethesda for delaying even after announcing that specific date. I 100% agree, especially if developers within the studio were throwing terms like this feels like the next Cyberpunk around. That's the sure sign that you absolutely need to delay your game as to not repeat history. And Bethesda in particular has a certain history, particularly where it concerns Fallout 76, a game that clearly launched long before it was fully baked and the results were disastrous. While Fallout 76 is in a much better state now, that whole launch period was some of the worst PR Bethesda Game Studios and Bethesda has ever gotten, and it tanked a significant amount of the reputation that they had built up over the years. I mean, sure, their games have always been known to be kind of puggy and not always the most refined, but they were, you know, fun enough that you could kind of overlook some of those technical flaws. But Fallout 76 didn't have a good game to make up for all the technical flaws, and even by Bethesda standards, Fallout 76 was one of the most technically unpolished games Bethesda Game Studios and Bethesda had ever released. So given that we absolutely do not want a repeat of both Cyberpunk 2077 and Fallout 76 Starfield, with this being a very important game for Bethesda Game Studios to nail after their reputation fell with Fallout 76 and Elder Scrolls Blades, I think it is absolutely pivotal that a delay like this happens. Now, the fact that Bethesda specified that we're now looking at a window of the first half of 2023 rather than the first quarter, I would say that it's unlikely Starfield will launch in the first quarter of 2023. It seems like they're aiming for Q2 2023. So I'd say somewhere between March and June is the most likely window for this game's launch. So we are looking at a roughly seven month delay or so, which is a substantial amount of extra time. Extra time that if CD Projekt Red had for Cyberpunk 2077 and Bethesda had for Fallout 76, we might have seen both of those games launch in a significantly more polished state. So look, I am somewhat disappointed. I was definitely looking forward to playing this game this winter, but if the delay ultimately needs to happen for Bethesda to release something that is more technically sound, than some of their past projects, then ultimately, I think it'll be worth it. Now, does the delay guarantee that this is going to be the most polished game at launch? Not necessarily. There are games that have been delayed sometimes multiple times and even still happen to launch in a relatively unpolished state. Especially when there are multiple delays to a game, it might indicate that there is trouble in Paradise, that there are aspects of the development pipeline that are not running as efficiently as it should be. Now, this is Starfield's first delay, technically. 11-11-2022 was the first time they ever announced the release date, so this would be just one delay so far, and as long as they are definitely sure about this release window now, the first half of 2023, maybe the indication is that ultimately they are just in the polishing phases, and that the content and the core experience of the game is fully built, and the hope is that this delay is more of an indication that they're adding extra polish rather than it being indication of a potentially troubled development. Obviously, I don't know for sure which is which, but I'm really keeping my fingers crossed for the best with Starfield as single player Bethesda Game Studios experiences. You know, I grew up with them, you know, Elder Scrolls, Fallout, you name it. And Starfield, I really want them to nail and I want them to prove to us that Fallout 76 and Elder Scrolls Blades isn't an indication of, you know, what the future holds for Bethesda Game Studios that Starfield will kind of start winning us back a little bit. Now, this delay does put Xbox in a somewhat awkward position. As noted by Nesbot here, PlayStation Studios has released more games on Xbox than Xbox Game Studios this year. This is technically true. Recall that MLB The Show launched 
on Xbox, and this was a PlayStation published title. If you Google MLB The Show 2022 publisher, you'll find that among the publishers is indeed Sony Interactive Entertainment, and this is a multi-platform game. And beyond that, another bit of irony is something that Jeff Grubb pointed out here. He retweeted Nesbot's tweet and added that, and Xbox has released nearly as many PlayStation exclusives as Xbox exclusives in the last nine months. This is technically true. He is referring to Deathloop and Ghostwire Tokyo, both of which were Bethesda published titles before Microsoft's acquisition, before Xbox's acquisition of ZeniMax and Bethesda as a whole. Existing contracts still remain, and before Bethesda was acquired, they had the contract that Deathloop and Ghostwire Tokyo would be timed exclusives for PlayStation. Inadvertently, Xbox has released nearly as many PlayStation exclusives as Xbox exclusives in the last nine months. And beyond that, with both Starfield and Redfall now delayed, Plenty of people are posing the question of, wait, so what Xbox first-party exclusives are releasing this year? Take Him tweeted about this. Wait a second, does Xbox have anything on the AAA console exclusive shelf for 2022 now? Specifically referring to first-party exclusives, which obviously are very important for a platform to compete with other console platforms out there. He responded to himself with, no AAA exclusive games at launch, no AAA exclusive games in year two, huh? No games, but Game Pass is an interesting strategy. There are games coming out for Xbox throughout the year, but in terms of those first-party Xbox exclusives that are meant to also fuel Game Pass, as Game Pass will see those Xbox first-party titles launch on the service on day one, things are looking pretty barren for Xbox for 2022. Now, that does mean that throughout 2023, we're going to get a far more consistent schedule of releases, but as far as 2022 is concerned, things are looking kind of empty. Now, some people have brought up Stalker 2, which does have a release date currently of December 8th, 2022. But given that the development studio behind Stalker 2, GSC Studio, was originally based in Kyiv, Ukraine, before moving to Prague, Czech Republic, and given the state of things going on in Ukraine with the war and all that, I am not entirely confident that they can get this game out by December of 2022. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe they'll manage somehow to launch this game by then, but with them essentially having to put Stalker 2's development on hold until they could relocate to a safer location and environment, it's bound to have delayed the development pipeline, so... Who knows? And even if it does launch on December 8th, 2022, technically, Stalker 2 isn't a Microsoft published title. It is a GSE Game World published title, but there happens to be a deal where it is going to be a timed exclusive. It is still a third party development studio and not a first party exclusive. So some people are saying, well, even if Stalker 2 does launch on time, technically, we would still be looking at a situation where as far as Xbox published first party titles. We are still technically not seeing any in 2022 with Starfield and Redfall now delayed to 2023. Now, Phil Spencer did address the inconsistent schedule of first party game releases. He tweeted the following. These decisions are hard on teams making the games and our fans. While I fully support giving teams time to release these great games when they're ready, we hear the feedback. Delivering quality and consistency is expected. We'll continue to work to better meet those expectations. So at least there is an acknowledgement that, you know, this is a problem for 2022 and the hope is that that things will improve in future years of Xbox Series' life cycle. So it seems as though Xbox is going to take something of a gap year as far as those first-party exclusives are concerned. And, you know, that's going to, again, cause some disappointment and frustration. But, on the other hand, it could be seen as a calm before the storm, with both Redfall and Starfield launching during the first half of 2023, and with potentially more games to come out throughout 2023, That year may look very good for Xbox, but yeah, 2022 is just uh, not a good year. But at the end of the day, for me, it's like if Starfield just wasn't ready for that 11-11-22 launch, then I'd much rather that Xbox have a gap year but make a really strong impression with both Starfield and Redfall launching more polished than trying to rush these game out in 2022, even when they're not quite ready and make a bad impression, even if they technically fill out the schedule to be more consistent. I'd rather have quality 
over, you know, artificial quantity or artificial consistency of schedule. I'd rather the games launch in the best state possible. So if that's ultimately what the result will be for Starfield as a result of this delay, I'm in full support. Though, ultimately, only time will tell whether this is enough of a delay. You know, there are some concerns around developers thinking that 11, 11, 22 marked a next cyberpunk kind of situation and is an additional up to seven months delay enough to polish this game up to a state where developers will feel satisfied and where the game won't, you know, fall apart at the seams come launch. I do wish this game the best and I hope they can knock it out of the park come release date during the first uh, half of 2023. But in the meantime, let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on the delay of Starfield, whether you're disappointed and frustrated or whether you ultimately see this as a positive move and what you think this all ultimately means for Xbox with that console now not having a first party exclusive release for Xbox and its Game Pass platform. Do you think that will negatively impact Xbox in the long term, or do you think it's more of a short-term setback? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.